we set out to change the conversation around colon cancer screenings and men, specifically black men who are most at risk for colon cancer. I know this was really important to Very you. Very important. And today our mission continues after my good friends Ronnie Alfred and I took the plunge and all went together to get our colonoscopies here in New York City to take our health into our own hands and to prove that getting screened isn't as scary as you think. So today is prep day and tomorrow is the big day. I got this first one down, it's pretty tough. I gotta try to finish this in less than two hours. I think I can do it too. Wish me luck. Ooh. 24 hours before the procedure, we are put on a clear liquid diet. The next morning, we are on our way. Ryan, you nervous? Yeah, actually I am, but I'm all right. I'm not nervous, I'm really. <laughs> he nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous too. Ah. May I have your last name and the doctor you'll be seeing today? Last name is Morgan and the doctor is Dr. Pacheco. Dr. Paolo Pacheco, a gastroenterologist here at the Manhattan Endoscopy Center and NYU Langone will be performing our procedures. Uh, so how do you guys feel this morning? Did uh, preps go okay last night? Yeah. And is it true that the prep is like the worst part? The prep actually is the hardest part and the anticipation, right? It's really important to follow those instructions. Mm -hmm. And you guys obviously did, so I appreciate that. Dr. Pacheco addresses one of our biggest concerns. What's the level of pain? You should feel no pain. Okay. So the anesthesia that we provide is going to basically relax you, make you really comfortable, and just put you at ease. So you'll feel as if you're having a really nice sleep. And is this the first time that you've seen a group of guys come in together? to get colonoscopy. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is very unique. You know, yeah. flying up here for this is, is pretty great. And the doctors take on why it's often tough to get men on board for screenings like this. I don't know what it is, machismo, whatever it is, men are less likely, I think, to be as willing to do this. Along for the ride, Dr. Darian. ABC News medical correspondent, Dr. Darian Sutton. We don't get these screenings. We don't talk to our family members about it. So that's why I'm so excited to be here today and to do this process with you. Ronald Stewart. <laughs> it's on to our pre-procedure assessment where a nurse takes our vitals. Do you have any pain right now anywhere? No, I'm a little tender. And reviews our medical history. And no problems with your lungs, no. asthma. Then into our gowns. You ready? You ready? Are you nervous? Yeah. Uh... Not as nervous mm -hmm. as I was when I walked in. I am so proud that you were doing this. Thank Not you. This is important just in general, but you know, in front in front of the world, you know, as black men, statistically, there are some studies that show that we're less likely to be offered colonoscopies. But what you're doing today is gonna save more lives than I can ever do in a shift in the ER. So when you Looking wake up, you're gonna feel refreshed, rejuvenated, and screened. You know, and then we're gonna be and done. clean. And <laughs> screened and clean. Come on out, Ronnie. Just before heading in, we ask any last minute questions. Dave Ron Stewart, man, nice to meet you. Welcome. I'm up first. Oh my God, it's about to happen now. Usually a few seconds before, it all becomes real, right? It's real now. To, yeah. <laughs> the anesthesiologist monitoring my vitals throughout the procedure. And what you see here is the inside, and this is all normal healthy tissue, which is what we typically see. A team of technicians are assisting him. A short time into the colonoscopy, the doctor finds something. There is a polyp there. So that's a little polyp. This is what we basically do colonoscopies for. I can't tell you the pathology until next week, but this looks like a traditional common adenoma. Dr. Pacheco removes the polyp. Open it all the way. Where it will go to a pathologist to test for cancer. Close, cut, perfect. So cecum clear, ileum clear, Ascending colon one. Oh, there's another polyp. A second polyp also removed for biopsy. That's exactly what we want the polyps in there. We'll see the normal tissue around it, and we suction that one. Watch this. In the channel. So now the polyp is gone. Less than an hour later, my colonoscopy is finished, and I felt nothing. Your colon looks fantastic, DeMarco. Up next, Alfred. Alfred's prep is excellent, and there is a polyp here. Like me, Alfred ended up having two polyps removed for biopsies. Close. Perfect. We have completed the exam. Just one, that's it. That's it. Nothing bad. And finally, Ronnie. So I'm going to slowly withdraw. Despite conducting the prep properly, Dr. Pacheco found that a third of his colon wasn't fully clear. The doctor did work searching for polyps in the portions of his colon that were visible. In recovery, we are monitored by the nurse and anesthesiologist. You're in recovery now, okay? Everything went fine. Your procedure went 
perfect. It was exactly what we normally see. Your colon was really well cleaned out. You did a great job. I felt a little groggy, but grateful. I don't know why I'm emotional. It's okay. As for the fellas, they recovered as quickly as I did, feeling great with no pain at all. We compared notes. Yeah. To me, the toughest part was the prep, and I thought this could be the toughest part. This was actually the easiest. Yeah. If yeah. I had to tell my friends, I would say it's not that bad. It's one day. We have an idea of what we think this is, but honestly, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I did it. You now are an example of the fact that when it's over, it's no big deal. One day that can save your life. One sacrifice. Wow, we did it. We did it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Crazy to watch yourself. You had seen crazy. Any of I've that. never seen my colon in person <laughs> or on TV, national TV. Well, now Ooh. your colon has been on national television. <laughs> <laughs> Let's welcome Dr. Jerry and Dr. Pacheco. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about what we saw in yeah. the video. You you found two polyps. That's right. With our good friend here, DeMarco. Mm -hmm. Talk us through what right. what else you found. Sure. So first of all, it was great, DeMarco, that you came because that's precisely why we do colonoscopy. The two polyps you had were what we typically see, and they're called adenomas, which we've talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And in fact, over 30% of all patients that even come for colonoscopy have polyps. So it's not that uncommon. Most of those polyps are adenomas like yours. And the problem with that is that if those are left alone, they can slowly mutate and change over time, and they can grow into cancer later. Not mm. all of them do, but some do. And in your case, you came early and young and ready and clean and ready to go. So we took them out and we reduced the risk for you. So, that's, so what's that's next? Important. When do I have to come back and get that checked? So, so in your case, you know, the guidelines suggest seven to 10 years for you because you had two small benign adenomas. Um, now, let's talk about guidelines. Guidelines are there because we have thousands of patients over 50 years that we've been looking at. So we're pretty comfortable telling you to come back in seven to 10 years. The problem with that, though, is that you're an individual, right? You're not a population, you're a person. And things can change. And there are certain things in your case that I would say to all of my patients. DeMarco, I say come back in seven to 10, but if something changes, an alarm symptom, blood in the stool, change in mm. weight, uh, abnormal uh, you know, emptying, something that doesn't feel right, the, the communication between you and I and the patient and the doctor is essential because you may need to come back earlier. Wow. Now, what can we do to prevent it? Well, there are certain things that you can't prevent. Age is a risk factor. Chronic illness like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease is a risk factor. Diabetes is a risk factor. Your genetics are a risk factor and your family history. So we can't do anything about that. But what we can do is change things that can reduce the risk, like diet and lifestyle. So sedentary lifestyle is bad. Exercising, keeping in good shape and fitness is important. Avoiding al excess alcohol and avoiding uh, tobacco are really key in reducing the risk. And also just um, you know, trying to avoid the uh, weight gain problem that we see in America and trying to just keep yourself healthy and fit. You can make so much of a change that you may need fewer colonoscopies. And at the end of the day, my job as a doctor is to prevent colon cancer. And if everybody did that, they'd see me a lot less frequently. Dr. Jerry, we have to talk about these numbers. We know black men are more at risk, not for just developing, but also from dying of colon cancer. Yes. Why is there this disparity and what can we do about it? You know, as we were discussing during the break, it, it probably would be an entire show if we spent time talking about why these disparities exist. If you look at them, there are some large factors like access to care and coverage, which is why we need to push for policies that provide more access and provide more benefits to those who are working within primary care. As specialists, we understand that primary care physicians are essential essential for preventative medicine. And then also in general, just helping patients understand the importance of communication. As Dr. Pacheco said, that conversation is so vital and so important, which is why I'm so proud of DeMarco, because you're not only, again, inspiring conversations in this moment, but also people are starting to have those conversations at home. So if any, anyone can take something away from this, it's make a plan today. And if you, if you don't need to, uh, help someone with their plan. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Dr. Jacko <laughs> and Dr. Darian, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Of course. And by the way, folks, uh, special thanks to Manhattan Endoscopy Center. And if you need help getting access to health screenings like colonoscopies, you can check out uh, federally qualified health centers in your area. Uh, these community health centers offer health care services on a sliding fee scale based on income. And don't be afraid to make that appointment. I am so glad I did. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.